Hey everyone, it's Leslie here from Hammer and Stain North Shore. I am really excited that you guys got your yarn for your cozy blanket and um, I'm going to walk you through the steps on how you can create your own really comfy, really cozy and soft blanket that you will absolutely love that you will probably have to uh, end up sharing with your partner, your husband, your roommate, your friends, your kids um, because they're going to love it too. And your pets. My pets love our cozy blankets. But um, for the sake of today's video, I am going to make a mini blanket just so it can move along a little faster and you're not watching a video for two straight hours. But the size of the blanket you're gonna make is essentially this size. You can see it's kind of wrapped around me. Um, it's nice and big. It's a great blanket to cuddle under on the couch um, and to keep you warm through any of the colder nights or colder days. So let's get started with what you need. You need your skeins of yarn. Skeins of yarn just mean balls of yarn. Again, I'm doing a mini blanket, so your uh, yarns are gonna look a lot larger than this. Um, so you need those. You should each have five of them. Um, if you're doing a solid color, you'll have five of one color. If you are doing a striped blanket, you'll have two of one color and three of the other. You also need some scissors handy so that you can cut the yarn um, if you need to cut it and I'll show you when you would need to do that. And you need a really kind of like large flat surface. You could do this on a clean floor if you wanted to, if you're on your bedroom floor um, and it's nice and clean, you could do it there or your kitchen countertop or dining room table. But as you see, we're gonna, <clears throat> really need a larger space in order to create the blanket by hand um, and not have it be crunched together. Okay, so some things to expect. This blanket will probably take you anywhere between two to three hours to complete. Usually when I do a uh, in-studio workshop, most people are done around the two and a half, three hour mark. Some people work faster, some people work slower. The beauty of this is that once you get going, it's really simple and it's the same thing over and over again. So if you start doing it and then you wanna take a break or you need to go out um, or anything like that, you can and you can kind of put it on pause and pick it back up. So don't feel like you need to have a three hour block set aside to do it. Um, I personally like to make the blanket while I'm maybe watching a movie or some Netflix so that I have something going on in the background, but it's totally up to you. The hardest part is the beginning, and I say hardest part, but it's really not that hard. It's just a different stitch than what you're gonna do over and over and over again for the rest of the blanket. But I'm going to walk you through step by step, like I said, making a mini blanket, but the instructions will be for making a larger blanket. And you will see from beginning to middle to end how to create your blanket. If you have any questions along the way, you can reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram at Hammer and Stain North Shore or send me an email at hammerandstainns at gmail.com and I will do my best to get back to you right away. I tested this out on my cousin who did the first virtual blanket workshop for me and um, she completed her blanket perfectly. Oh, hello. <laughs> See, she loves the blankets. Um, but she completed her blanket with no problem. So just know that if you get stuck at all, reach out to me um, or take a step back. But it is pretty simple. You don't need any other tools but your hands, some scissors, and your yarn. So. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start with the color that you have three of if you're doing a stripe blanket. If you're doing a solid blanket, you can start with obviously the color that you have. But you wanna start with the color that you have three skeins of, and then you'll move on to the ones that you have two of. And I'm just placing my extra yarn aside because you don't need it right now. And I've laid my yarn out in a line with the ball on the right-hand side. And I'm gonna show you the first stitch in the first row. Okay, so you wanna have about six inches of what we call a tail here. And then we're gonna make a loop just like this to start off. You wanna make sure you have some of the yarn unraveled, but you keep the ball to your right-hand side for now. So you make your first loop just like this, 
and it's going to be about two to three fingers in um, in length for the loop. Then I'm going to take my piece of yarn. I'm going to bring it underneath and through the loop just like that, and I'm going to pull it to the side. Again, it's going to be about three finger lengths if you're looking for a size. Two is going to be a um, more tighter blanket, which is fine, but three should be your max. And as you can see, the yarn that I have on top, I'm not crossing it. I just pulled it through and pulled it to the side. And I'm going to do that for another like 25, 26 times because you want to end up with these upper loops, you want to end up with 25 or 26 of them, around that number. So I'm going to take my yarn, I'm going to pull it through that loop and pull it to the side. It almost starts to look like a pretzel. I take my yarn, I pull it through and pull it to the side. See how I'm not crossing it? If you were to cross it, this is what it would look like. Do not do this. You would cross it and you would pull it through and all of a sudden you would end up with your yarn on the bottom. You don't want to end up with your yarn on the bottom. You want to keep it on the top and you want to keep it so that they don't cross. So again, we're going to be counting one, two, three, four, and we're going to make 25 of them all the way across. So just take it, pull it through, and this is going to be um, your border. So you want it to be kind of tight. You don't want it to be too holy, but you want it to be loose enough that you can see these upper loops. I'm just going to keep doing this until I have my 25. Now remember, I'm making a mini blanket, so I'm actually not going to go 25 for the mini blanket's sake, but you want to. So as you keep doing it, count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I'm going to show you what happens when you get to your 25th. Okay, so let's say you've just gotten to your 25th or your 26th loop. So you've pulled your last one through. This time, um, your next one, you're going to pull it through, but instead of going to the side, we're going to go up. So we're going to pull it through and we're just going to make our loop stand up just like that. Bring it a little closer and show you one more time. So you've got your last loop here because you've got now 25 or 26 of these upper loops. We're going to pull it through and we're going to go up. So again, still keeping it so it's not crossed, but going up just like that. Again, two or three finger lengths. If you want it to be a really tight blanket, you are going to make these um, a little smaller, maybe more like that size so that two fit comfortably. I like doing it so there's about three. So you've now made that upper loop and now we're going to start going back this way. So I'm actually going to move my ball of yarn and put it over on my left hand side, unravel it a little, and I'm going to spread this out and now my ball of yarn is on the left hand side and my yarn string is also going to be on the left going this way. So I made my upper loop. Now I'm going to take the yarn and we're going to make upper loops through all of your 25 or 26 like I said um, loops up here. So I'm going to take the yarn, I'm going to pull it through the loop and go up. Again, we're not crossing. See how I'm keeping this? See how I'm keeping this not crossed? It's not crisscrossing. The yarn on the left-hand side that's connected is staying on the left. So I find my next upper loop, which is right here. I take the yarn, I go from underneath, I pull it through, and I go up. You want all of these upper loops to be roughly the same size going across. I find my next loop right here. I take my yarn, I grab it from underneath, I pull it up and bring my loop up. And as I get closer, you guys will see it a little bit. So I'm just going underneath. So I'm taking my yarn, going underneath, pulling it up. And those 25 upper loops, that's what we're pulling it through. Up just like this. You want to make sure you don't miss any, so 
you gotta look to make sure, did I get all my upper loops? Did I not miss any? Let's unravel my yarn a little more. Take it and go underneath and go up, go underneath and go up. And then you're gonna be at your last one where you started because you've got your tail next to your last one. You're just gonna pull it up just like you did for the others. So this is what it looks like when you've completed your first row going back this way. Now, this part I think is where it gets easier because we're just gonna do the same thing over and over. That first border was just one stitch you did once and now we're gonna do all upper loops from here on out. So I am going to take my ball of yarn, move it over to my right side because that's the way I'm going now. I like to do that. I like to move my yarn over to the side in direction that I'm going. So now we're gonna go back to the right. I'm gonna take my yarn and we're gonna go through every single upper loop. So at this point, I want you to count all your upper loops. If you have 25, if you have 27, if you have 28, whatever the number is, remember that number, write it down. So in my case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, in your case, you should have more around that 25 mark. It's important to have that number because every time you complete a row, you wanna count it and make sure it's the same number. If you don't have the same number, it means you missed a loop when you're doing this back and forth, back and forth. And if you miss a loop, you can go back and unravel it and get back to that spot where you missed it. Um, so you wanna try to not miss a loop by counting. So now I'm going to take my yarn and we're just going to go through these upper loops. So again, I'm going from the back. I'm going to put my fingers through it and pull it up just like that. Again, I'm not crossing. So you don't want your yarn to be crossed. So we're just making upper loops in our upper loops and starting our next row. So we're going up. You can see this is all we're gonna be doing from here on out. Go up. Again, you want your loops to be roughly the same size so that they're straight across. And so you can have consistency. Again, you're going for that two to three finger length um, in size. So I'm just gonna pull it up, up, and up. I'm gonna show you what we do when we get to the last one. So I'm always pulling the yarn from underneath and pulling it through and up. So now you have your last one. You're at your last loop on that first row. So you're gonna pull it through and up just like that. We're gonna start going back this way, okay, we're gonna start going back to the left. So I'm taking my ball of yarn, I'm unraveling it a little, I'm placing it on the left-hand side. In that last loop you just made, you're gonna go through it again to start going this way. So I'm taking my ball of yarn, keeping the yarn over here on top, and I'm gonna go through that one again and start my next row. You grab the next loop up, make it, um, pull a loop up. So when you get to an end, you make a loop, you move your yarn over and you go through that loop again to start going this way. Go up, and right now, we're just gonna continue with our upper loops, just like this. Until we get to the end, you'll make your last loop and then you'll loop it again and go the other way. So this is what it should start to look like. Again, I'm doing a mini blanket, but this is about four rows up. You can see how the loops make these rows. So if you were to miss a loop, it would be pretty obvious, but I always say you have to count your loops at the end of a row to make sure it matches your original starting number. So this is what it looks like. If you are doing two different colored um, yarns for the stripe look and you start to get down to the last of your yarn you want to make sure that you can complete a, a whole row 
So then you can attach the next color and go back. If you feel like you don't have enough yarn to complete that row, don't start that row. You're going to cut it and you're going to attach the other color. If you feel like you can get all the way across like I can here, um, I'm going to do my final row and then show you guys how to attach the next color to it. If you're doing a solid color blanket, you don't have to worry about completing a row because if you stop halfway through and you run out of um, yarn halfway through a row, you're just attaching the same color to the end of the yarn and can continue on. But it would look really funny if you stopped halfway and then attached a new color and the new color started halfway through. Okay, so I just completed my last um, loop and I don't have enough yarn to go back this way. So right now that's when I'm going to cut the yarn, leaving some extra room, and I'm gonna attach my new color to it, okay? So all you do for attaching it is, it can be the new color or the same color. You're just gonna take it and you want to make um, one knot there and then make a second knot so it's nice and secure just like that don't pull it too hard or you may break the yarn but pull it hard enough so that it connects then with these little tails i'm just going to cut it off leaving just a little here so it won't unravel and we'll tuck it in so you won't see it so that's all you do for attaching the yarn now I have my new color and I'm just going to continue on just like I did before. So I'll move this over here. Okay, so I have my new color and I'm going to put it over to my left hand side because I'm going this way now. And I'm going to start with my new loop just like that. Okay. So I'm just going to continue on with my loops as I go, but now I have my new color. And I'm going to show you guys an overview of it. And I'm just going through, pulling it through and up with my new color. So it's creating a new row with the new color. So here is where I knotted it off to connect them and that's my new row. So this is what it should look like if you're doing two colors for your new row. Now I'm gonna take this yarn, I'm gonna move my ball over here because we're going back to the um, going back to the right side and I'm just gonna continue on. I'm gonna make a loop through this, pull it through and keep going all through these loops until I start to run out of this yarn I'm gonna cut it and attach the other color to it. So again, a quick overview of how it looks when you're doing your striped blanket look. See how the rows go from the bottom all the way up. And now I'm gonna attach my next color again because I can't make it back across with a light blue. So I'm going to cut this, knot it with my dark blue and start my next row. So I just knotted the two together. I left little tails here, which is fine. And I'm gonna start now with my dark blue going this way. So I'm just gonna make a loop. If those tails really bother you, you can cut them a little more, just like that. And I'm just taking my dark blue and making my upper loops now. Unravel my yarn a little. Just keep going up through the loops. And for me, this is my last color and gonna be my last few rows. For you, you've got five skeins of yarn. So you will have one of your colors here. You'll have the color that you chose two of here. You'll have a dark blue or whatever color you have here. You'll have light blue again on top of that and then you'll have dark blue to end it all the way across again 
always making sure that I have the right number of loops. So you always wanna make sure to count your loops, make sure you have that original number and keep going. Okay, so I am now gonna be going back to the left and this is gonna be my last row when it comes to my blanket. Again, I'm making a mini blanket, you're making a much larger blanket, but when you are down to your last bit and you know you can make it back one more time, this is what you're gonna do for your loops. You're gonna make them a little larger than what you've been making them. So if you've been making them three fingers, you wanna make them four fingers, and you're just gonna do the same thing, all these loops up, but they're just gonna be a little bigger. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish off the row and tie it off to finish and complete your blanket. So I just completed my last row and my loops are larger than I've been going every single time. And I end with some leftover string on this side. So now we're gonna go back over here and we're going to start our border from this side where there is no tail. Okay. So you're almost at the end, like this is the last step. You have your larger loops than normal and you're back at the side where there is no tail. So you're gonna grab your loop, your end loop, grab the loop next to it. It could be your end loop is on your left side or your end loop is on your right side. But you're gonna grab your end loop with whatever hand is closest to it, take the loop next to it, pull it through and then grab it with that original hand. Take the loop next to it, pull it through, and grab that new loop. So as you can see, I'm starting to create a border. So for me, my loop, my end loop was on my left side. So I have um, a loop in my left hand. I'm gonna take the loop in my right hand. I'm gonna grab the loop with my left hand and pull it through. So you can see it's gonna create a border. Okay, and we're working this way with it until I get to the end. Okay, so this is the border that it's creating. And when you get to your last loop, you are going to pull it through. So here's my last loop. I'm pulling it um, through the loop on the other side and grabbing that last loop again. And here's your tail, your extra, um, your extra yarn. And you only need again about like six inches. So this is your last loop. I'm gonna take this tail, pull it through, to kind of knot it off. But to make sure that it's not gonna unravel, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna knot it a few times to make sure it's really, really, really secure so that that won't unravel. I'm even gonna take it and go down to one of these and make a knot through there as well. You can never have too many knots to make sure it's nice and secure and to double knot it. So there we go. So I've got a bunch of double knots in there. Now I'm just going to cut this and I'm just gonna take this extra part and I'm just gonna weave it through just like that. Okay, then I'm gonna go to my beginning because my beginning still has the extra tail and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take it and I'm going to double knot it so that the beginning won't unravel. And again, I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna go up to one of these loops here and knot it with that too, just to be extra careful. Um, like I said, there's never too much knotting that can happen. And pull it nice and tight so it knots. And then you can either keep it and just weave it through to kind of hide it, just like that. And then you've got your completed blanket. So this is the side that, and the, um, the design that has been face down the whole time, so you haven't seen the back this is your front that you've been looking at and it's all completed now.
Now, when you hold it up, if you see that you missed a hole or you missed a loop and you see a hole, don't panic. We can tie it off. I'm sure you're gonna have some extra string from cutting because you couldn't make it all the way back across a row. So what you'll do is you'll just, let's say I had a hole missing or a loop missing and you can see it. You wanna tie it off. So you're just gonna take that extra string, kind of tie, grab the loop that you didn't complete and tie it off to the loop in front of it. Um, that way it won't unravel on you. So this happens all the time. I've made a lot of these blankets. Even when I count, I can get distracted. Um, and I've held it up and gone, oops, there's definitely a loop that I missed there. And I just tie it off and it looks completely fine. So don't freak out if that happens to you. It's really easy for you to tie it off and it be okay, especially if it's in the middle of your blanket, you're not gonna unravel the whole thing. Um, but that's why counting the loops as you go will help you in writing down that number so that every time you count, you don't have to keep remembering it, especially if you decide to take a break. You have your number of loops, you know what it should be every time, um, and hopefully you won't have to tie anything off. Um, but if you do, again, happens all the time and it's not a big deal, just take the color of the loop that you um, missed and tie it off to the next one. And there we go, this is just a mini blanket so I could show you guys quicker than um, taking two hours to make it or to have a video. I hope you love your cozy blanket. I hope it gives you happiness and warmth. And um, if you wanna share a picture of it, the completed picture with me, with you under it or holding it up, I would love to see how it turned out. You can email it to me at hammerandstainns at gmail.com or send me a quick picture on Facebook or Instagram. Or if you post it to your own Facebook and Instagram page, make sure to tag Hammer and Stain North Shore in it and then I'll get to see it. So thanks again and I hope you had fun.